Hey guys, T-Bob here. Um, a bunch of people have been asking me to make a really basic intro to yoga sort of video. So I wanted to take you through what I would uh, consider a basic yoga video to teach you some of the basics, some of the what to concentrate on, what are the most important things, and maybe learn a little bit along the way. Um, so if you have box DVDs, or if you have yoga blocks, even better. You might grab some of those. You might have a blanket around to pad your knees if you want. You may also grab a big fluffy pillow to use as well. So we'll start out on our backs. Um, and if you have the blanket or pillow or both, set it up so it's um, right under your knees when you lay on your back. So come on your backs. <clears throat> And stretch your legs out and lay your arms by your sides. And you might place a hand on your belly and the other one on your chest if you'd like. And we're gonna just start out with some, just to tune in and notice and take a couple breaths. So on your next inhale, inhale into your belly let that breath move up into your chest and let that out your mouth and do that again feel the breath fill the belly move up into the chest as you inhale and on the exhale feel both of those places fall do one more of those inhale Expanding, receiving the breath, and just let it go on the exhale. You might close your eyes or soften your gaze here for a moment. Just allow the breath to come in and out the nose. Just feeling if your hands are on the body how your belly and your chest move up and down with each breath. Don't feel like you have to work hard at it or think, am I doing it right? Because you're, if you're just breathing, you're doing it right. Just letting the movement of the breath Be the focus of your attention. And then just notice what part of the back of your pelvis is touching the ground. The very back of the pelvic structure is your sacrum. It's the base of your spine. And then notice what part of your shoulders and upper back are touching the ground. And underneath you are, on each side of your chest, on the back of your ribcage, are your two uh, scapula. Scapulae, scapulas. And ideally, They're underneath your ribcage right now. And then move your attention up to the back of your skull. Notice if your chin is really jutted up to the sky. See if you can lengthen the back of your neck so the skull reaches back behind you, that back part of the skull that's on the ground. That's your occiput. So you have nice long length in the back of your neck, not tipping into a double chin necessarily, but just seeing if you can lengthen the head away from your torso a little bit and find, allow your uh, chin to p draw in a little bit. 
So when our sacrum, scapula, and skull are in this nice straight line, we know our spine is in line and neutral. We're going to try to repeat this sacrum, scapula, skull shape in all of our poses as much as possible. <laughs> and control when we get out of that. So it's a conscious choice. You might gently blink your eyes back open as you move the block or whatever uh, bolster blanket pillow out from underneath your knees. Then bend your knees and set your feet flat on the floor. And if your arms extend um, by your sides here, make sure your feet are not up by your glutes. Walk your feet forward. So you're nice at, so we'll make a nice long bridge here. We're going to come into Satu Bandhasana, bridge pose. Start by noticing again how that sacrum is level on the ground, not letting your pelvis tip so the tailbone is reaching up, not letting it drop so the frontal hip points point up to the sky and the belly spills. Take an inhale. And then reach your tailbone forward, extend it forward, and squeeze your glutes to lift your hips up off the ground. You don't have to move them up very far. You don't have to lift up off the ground very far. Traditionally, bridge is taught as a huge back bend. But using it in the beginning of a class like this, you really want to use it to ground and turn on your glutes. So you might even bring your hands to your glutes and make sure they're firm. Even if there's more flesh there, you might feel to see if you can feel the muscles underneath there, that they're firm and working and that the tailbone is lengthening forward and up, not scooping under, but just lengthening forward. And then lower the hips to the ground. We'll do that again. Take an inhale. Scoop the tailbone forward and then exhale, lift up using your glutes, checking in. If you do a lot of sitting in your daily life, the glutes are probably turned off, not used to working here. So this can be a little challenging maybe, or maybe it's super easy. <laughs> Pause here, keep the glutes active and we'll stretch out the wrists. Reach the palms up to the sky with the fingers facing back behind you. With your right hand, find where your fingers meet the palm and gently pull back on that. Anytime we get onto our hands, as we're going to do later, you want to make sure you prepare your wrists in some way. We also spend so much time of our lives now in wrist flexion with the palm facing down in this shape. But it's, uh, it's good to take a break in the middle of your day and make some space in the front of that forearm and open up the wrist. Awesome. We'll switch the other wrist, so find the spot where the fingers meet the palm on the right hand and gently pull back on that. Breath should be big. Glutes are probably really working here, so you might lower here as you finish the wrist stretch. Big breaths, or you can keep the hips up. And then lower your arms on your sides and lower your hips slowly. Try how, try to see how slowly you can descend back to, down to the ground. We also tend to be pretty weak in the transverse abdominus. That's abs, part of your abs. So next we're going to fire that up. So leave your feet on the floor so you feel really grounded. And again, see if your sacrum can feel flat on the ground. And you'll have a little, you probably can't see, but you'll have a little bit of a natural curve in your low back. And you want to leave that curve there as we do our abdominal exercises. 
bring the hands behind the head and clasp them at the bottom of the skull, the lowest part of your skull. Allow your elbows to reach up to the sky. Take an inhale. And on the exhale, lift up maybe an inch, maybe half an inch up off the shoulder blades. Pause on the exhale to feel the whole front of your core hugging together without pressing your low back into the ground. Inhale and lower. This might be challenging. Stick with it. You've got strength. Exhale, lift up. Let your head, the weight of your head, fall back in your hands even as your low ribs pull together and down. Inhale and lower. Two more of these guys. Exhale, lift up. Core is holding firm. Head is weighing back in the hands, not using your neck to do this. Inhale and lower. Last one, exhale, lift up. Getting deep in your core, firming and holding it all together. Head is not involved, neck is not involved. Inhale and lower. And let the breath out your mouth. Pause to notice here, what does this feel like after a little core engagement? Even in a beginning class, it's important to prepare your body to do the things you want it to do. Part of that is getting more core strength. Hug your knees into your chest towards your chest. You might not even pull them very far. You might use your hands on the back of the thighs. You might only get to here. And then you might rock here side to side a little bit and allow your low back to touch the ground here. And then you might circle the knees around a little bit. Just a little light massage on the low back and around the sacrum. And then roll to your side, on your right hand side, and press yourself up. And come around onto your hands and knees. <clears throat> so you want to see if you can get your knees right under those bony frontal hip points, and your wrists right under your shoulders, with the wrist creases parallel to the front of the mat. When you get there, pause a moment and notice if your um, tailbone is tucked under, rounding your low back, or if the tailbone, the belly is dropping and the tailbone is reaching up to the sky. And maybe tip the pelvis forward and backward a little bit and find a neutral. So when you get to that neutral, Hug your belly in to support yourself here. The more you can hug the belly, you can support your low back here and keep your spine neutral. And then notice if your head is dipped or your chin is jutting forward. Pull your whole face parallel to the ground, straight up away from the ground. And lengthen, again, lengthen in the back of the neck. Tuck your right toes and slide the toes back to straighten your right leg. Nothing else changes. Notice if you've started to tip in the pelvis, you let go of the belly, keep them in. And then think about when you were in your bridge, how firm, how much you had to work those glutes. And think about that in the right hip. You might even, if your left hand is available, you might even set your left hand on your, on your sacrum so you can feel those left glute, the right glutes. From here, squeeze the glutes to use them to lift the leg up off the ground and set it back down. Whew. Do that two more times. Lift the leg up using the squeeze of the glutes to do that and set it back down. Right hip bone stays lifted, belly stays firm. One more. 
lift the leg up and set it down and then set the knee back down. Pause here, back where we started to notice differences in the sides of the hips. Reestablish your neutral and we'll do the second side. Tuck your left toes and slide your left toes back to straighten that leg so nothing else changes. You're not lifting up the left hip. And think about your left glutes. Get your mind into the same sensation you had in the bridge. Use that to squeeze the left glutes to lift the left leg up off the ground. And then set the foot back down. Nothing changes in the low back. Squeeze the glutes to lift the leg up. Belly stays in and set it back down. One more leg lift, squeeze the glutes, use them to lift the leg up and set the foot down, set the knee back down under the hips. So that's hip extension. We wanna be able to move the femur, that big thigh bone in the hip socket, independent of the tipping of the pelvis. Moving on, we're going to get into um, what we call serratus puffs. So the serratus anterior is a muscle right in your armpit, sort of, underneath uh, your shoulder um, that stabilizes the scapula on the back, and it also allows the scapula to move away from center. It's called protraction. So we're going to do a few of these puffs. You can watch the first round through. On the inhale, you'll push the ground away from you and puff up the chest in between the shoulder blades. The shoulder blades will spread apart. Nothing changes in the low back, nothing changes in the neck. And then on the exhale, drop the chest down through the straightened arms and the shoulder blades will you may not even feel them, that's fine. Just feel like you could drop your chest down and it's the opposite action. The shoulder blades will pull together a little bit. Do a couple more of those, puffing up between the shoulder blades and dropping back down. And one more, puff up between the shoulder blades and chest lowers through straightened arms. This time, puff up between the shoulder blades and then see if you can lower about three quarters of the way. And that's about where your neutral should be. So anytime you're coming to hands and knees or plank, this is about where you want your shoulders to be aligned. You might even have them up by the ears a little bit, so pull them back towards the back of the room. And then we're going to test that out. So, uh, tuck your right toes and straighten your right leg back without moving the shoulders, without moving the core. Tuck your left toes and step that foot back into plank without changing the shoulders. Come back to the hands and knees. We're going to do that a couple more times. So this is probably going to be a lot more challenging on the shoulders than what maybe you're used to. So check in. Puff up maybe and then lower about three quarters of the way. Pull the shoulders back to the back of the room. Straighten your right leg. Tuck your right toes. Tuck your left toes into plank. Step the left foot into plank. Hold in plank. Core in. Shoulders in neutral and then set the knees back down on the ground. Woo, awesome. We're gonna to come to what's called forward fold Uttanasana at the top of the mat. So you might just kind of crawl your way forward. But what you'll do is you'll bring the feet right next to each other about hip width distance. Bend your knees really generously, and this is when the blocks or books or DVDs can come in handy. You can set them on either side of you so your hands can rest on them. Now the traditional forward fold is super straight legs and you're trying to pull your torso down. 
In my version of a forward fold, the knees are bent generously, the hips are sitting back and down, and the spine is really long here. You can even let your head go. You might shake it yes, shake it no. And just take a few breaths here to feel what's happening. You can have as much weight in these hands on the blocks. You might be up really high. As long as your knees are really bent and you feel like if you stuck your fingers in your hip creases, that you could use that to push your hips back a little more. Tune into your feet and notice where your weight is in your feet. See if you can press down through the big toe and the little toe just as much the inner heel and the outer heel equally. And the big toe mount, so where the big toe meets the rest of the foot, press down in there. And the same with the little toe mount, where the little toe meets the foot, press down into there. Keep this press in the feet and we'll rise up to stand. So as you rise, press down into the feet, reach the arms forward and up, and squeeze the glutes to press the hips forward to rise up. Arms reach up overhead. Bring your hands to your heart, pause. So we're gonna do that hip hinge a few times. So on your inhale, reach your arms forward and up, on the exhale, bend the knees, shift the hip creases back as you allow the torso to fold back down to forward fold. So you really want to be hinging at the hips, not moving in the low back. We'll do that a couple more times. Inhale, arms forward and up, glutes squeeze to press the hips forward. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, arms forward and up. Exhale, bend the knees, push the hips back, maybe even bringing the hands into those hip creases to encourage the hips to go back, forward fold. One more of these, inhale the arms forward and up to stand. Exhale, hands to heart. Last one, inhale, arms forward and up. Exhale, hinge, fold, shoot the hips back. All right, now we're gonna rise up to stand. Inhale, arms forward and up. Exhale, hands to heart. So that hip hinge is really important for relieving the low back of doing the work. You don't want to get into this kind of forward folding action. This hinge, it's like a squat, is how you want to be able to pick things up off the ground. It's how you want to move, how you want to take a seat. All that jazz. All right, come back to your front of your mat. I'm gonna stand facing you so you can see what I'm doing and you can mirror me. Stand up tall again, bring the hands to the heart, bring your awareness into your feet again. Heels should be right under those frontal hip points and bring awareness to the four corners of your feet. The heel, inner heel and outer heel press down e equally. The big toe and little toe press down equally. The big toe mound and the little toe mound press down equally. Shift your weight into your left foot. So that'll look like the hips going over a little bit. But don't let them jut out. Keep this right hip, or keep this left hip squeezing here. 
come onto the ball of the left foot and then moving the femur, this thigh bone, in the hip socket, externally rotate so the knee comes out to the side. Drag that heel and ball the foot to the inside of that ankle, the other ankle. So this is a, a modified version of a tree pose. You can stay here with the ball of the foot on the ground and the heel pressing into the ankle. Or bring your hands to your heart, stand up really tall, and use your inner thigh to slide the heel up the leg as far as it goes that feels comfortable and pause wherever it lands. If you feel really wobbly here, you might set those toes back on the ground, heel pressing back into ankle, ankle pressing into heel. Take a few breaths here to feel the right of uh, the left foot pressing all four corners. The left glutes are on, not snoozing. The core is holding you up, wrapping all the way around your spine and rib cage. Your shoulders are back and open. And then come back to stand with both feet. This is Tadasana's mountain pose. You might lay the arms by your sides. You might shake out that left ankle or maybe encircle that left ankle. That can be a lot. And then we'll take the other side of that. So hands to the heart, standing up tall. Come onto the ball of the left foot using that thigh bone in the hip socket, externally rotate so the hip bone is not moving back. The thigh bone is moving in the hip socket. And then drag that heel, left heel, into the right ankle and pause there. Press down through all the parts of the right foot. Maybe staying here or leaving your hands at your heart, use your hamstring, your inner thigh, to draw the heel up the leg as far as feels comfortable and when you get there, pause and let it sit wherever it lands. You might stay here or you might set the toes back on the ground, heel back into ankle and pause for a few breaths. Left glutes are firm. Is your core wrapping and supporting the center of your body? Is your chest open and not rounding forward? And how does your breath move here in this shape? Awesome. Come back to stand Tadasana at the top of the mat. And now we'll cool things down, chill things out, but one more hip hinge to try to drive that into your brain. Inhale the arms forward and up. Exhale, bend the knees, shift the hips back as you hinge in the hips and forward fold. However you wanna make your way onto your backs, you might come on the knees, you might sit the hips to one side and roll around on your back <clears throat> or whatever makes sense in your body. <laughs> when you get on your back, bend your knees, place your feet on the floor, lay your arms by your sides and check in again. Sacrum, shoulder blades, back of skull. Finding length in the spine, in a neutral spine. We'll do a short uh, spinal twist here. So hug your knees towards your chest as far as you can. The closer you can get your thighs 
into your chest for this, the safer it is for your low back. Keep hugging them in and open the arms out to the sides. With your legs as close to your body as possible, let the knees fall over to the right. Let them fall all the way, even if the left shoulder lifts up off the ground. That right arm can be, or that left arm can be floating in the air, or you might bend the elbow, or you might reach the arm up overhead. Explore with that arm and see which version of this feels better. And then take two really full breaths with long releases on the exhales. Maybe even sighing out the mouth. Ha. <sighs> Just allowing gravity to take over and pull the body into the ground. And then if you move that left arm, move it, reach it back out to the left. Use your core to hug your knees through center. Keeping the knees as close to the body as you can, let them fall over to the left. Let the knees land and let the right shoulder come, off, up, come up off the ground. You might feel fine with that arm reaching out, dangling, hanging, awkwardly maybe. Or you might bend the elbow if that feels a little better. Or you might reach the arm overhead. And just take a few big breaths here. Letting the exhales be full. Letting yourself empty out. Use your core to hug the knees back to center and set the feet down on the ground and pause here again to notice. How is your breath moving? Where are you gripping or holding on that doesn't need to grip or hold on? What else can you let go of? And then we'll make our way into our last pose. It's called Shavasana or Corpse Pose. I'm going to suggest you grab your blanket and maybe your pillow again to set it right under your knees. This is great if you have some low back discomfort. It can help you to relieve some of that by allowing the tailbone to reach forward a little bit. Lift up your chest and feel like you can squeeze your shoulder blades together and then down towards the front of your room and then see if you can relax all of that. Allow your rib cage to relax on top of that. Allow your shoulders to relax on top of that. And then in Shavasana, Sometimes people say this is when the real practice begins because this is when you are alone with yourself and there's nothing to do. Don't feel like you need to do anything or try to do anything. There's no wrong way to take Shavasana. But you might take one last big exhale, letting the breath sigh out the mouth. Ah. You might soften the gaze or close the eyes here. And now see if you can get a sense of the whole body. 
just a really fuzzy image of the weight of the whole body weighing into your mat, into the earth, feeling supported, held by our Mother Earth. And then let yourself rest here for a few moments. The mind probably will want to think, and that's fine, it wants to work things out, it's a problem solver. So in this time, if you catch yourself thinking, maybe just in the back of your head, really quietly whisper in on inhales and out on exhales, as long as you need to. And let yourself rest here in Shavasana for just a few moments. If you have time and you'd like to stay here a little longer, stay here. Or you might pause the video to take a few more minutes. Whenever you're ready, take a deep inhale again into belly, into chest. Let the breath come out of the mouth again. Start to move or wiggle around any kind of instinctual wake up motions. Just anything that you might do first thing in the morning. There's no right or wrong. And then on your next inhale, reach the arms up overhead, stretch long. Pelvis away from ribs, ribs away from pelvis. Hands away from heels, maybe hands away from toes. And then roll onto your right hand side, curled up into a ball. Maybe rest your head on your bicep and just hang out here for just a moment. You might keep your eyes closed or your gaze soft as you press yourself up to whatever seat is comfortable for you. If you have your blanket pillow nearby, you might sit up on it. You might bend your knees and set your feet on the ground, or you might cross the ankles a little bit. 
and see if you can sit up tall here. Imagine there's a wall behind you. See if you can imagine sacrum on the wall, shoulder blades on the wall, back of the skull on that wall behind you. And then bring your hands to the heart. We'll close out the practice. We'll take three big breaths. Inhale into belly, up into rib cage, and let it out. Inhale, belly, up into the ribs, up into the chest, and let that out. One more. Inhale, belly, ribs, chest, and let that out. And pause here just to notice, how do you feel? What's shifted from the beginning of the practice? How does your breath feel different? How does your mind space feel different? The shape of your thoughts, the speed of your thoughts. And just thank yourself for taking a moment to move and breathe and connect with yourself. Bow your head in gratitude to yourself, to everyone that has brought us this practice. And traditional classes close with the word namaste. It, it's like a greeting, a salutation, a closing, all at once. So, namaste.